Hello, and welcome back to our video series on healing attachment wounds. The clip I'm gonna share with you today was taken from a live stream event in which I answered several questions from my audience. We are going to address the question, how do we reparent and heal the wounded inner child? In this clip, you will learn how to conceptualize the wounded inner child in a developmental framework, how to recognize the inner child's effect on your energy body, why the concept of a wounded inner child is so effective in treatment, how the inner child gets projected into our relationships and turns on the inner critic, and of course, how to heal the wounded inner child. If you haven't checked out our series yet, I invite you to look at the playlist, Healing Attachment Wounds, on my YouTube channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put out videos once a week and I wouldn't want you to miss out. Now, before we dive into today's clip, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Brianna McWilliam, and I am a licensed and board certified creative arts therapist with more than 15 years in the field, helping adults struggling with insecure attachment go from self-doubting to self-sovereign so they can attract the soul-shaking passionate partnerships that they want. And I do this using a psycho-spiritual approach to creative arts interventions which I call the McWilliam Method. The content on my YouTube channel is derived from my online courses, which you can learn more about through the link in the caption of this video. If you would like to learn more about your attachment style, you can take the four question quiz. If you like what you see in here and you want to learn more, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put up videos once a week and I wouldn't want you to miss out. Now let's dive into today's question. So we have this idea that healing our attachment experiences in a way we have to accept responsibility and accountability on some level for reparenting ourselves. But what is reparenting really? Now, the traditional models, right, our traditional models of psychotherapy and treatment have a tendency to sort of um, espouse that uh, therapy is kind of a treasure hunt into the past. And once we have some insight into how the past has affected us in the present moment, then that insight is going to release the energy around it. But then we feel baffled when all that knowledge and awareness doesn't actually affect any changes on the body level or on the energetic level, which is how you qualitatively experience your life day to day, how you feel emotionally, who you are attracted to, who is attracted to you. And when you can bridge that, when you can bridge insight into your past experiences into the present moment, and you can create a metaphorical or symbolic construct for that, because that that's when you start to have real changes, because that is how the body organizes nonverbal information. So in other words, this is why the concept of healing the inner child is so popular because it's so useful. It is a creative concept that utilizes symbol and metaphor to organize a lot of ideas um, within us for understanding what it means to have let's what we call a developmental arrestment. In other words, to have energy that got stuck and kind of rigid and, and, and split off at a certain time of life. Okay, we, we call that an inner child. And so, for example, internal family systems theory builds upon this and is very similar, but it adds to it this notion that we have many self parts in addition to an inner child. So you could have, for example, a manager or a defender or a guard or something like that, and a self part, an aspect of yourself that protects the inner child from you. Because when you try to access that part of yourself because you have long been unkind or neglectant of that inner child, you have to gain that inner child's trust. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself on the most fundamental level. And you have to earn that trust. And you earn that trust like anybody else would have to earn your trust through consistent action and behavior, cohesiveness between what you say and what you do, honoring your needs no matter what, believing that you have the right to have your needs and feelings no matter what, right? Being aware of and bolstering your own boundaries, not letting anybody walk all over you. Yes, the inner child, if that's what comes up, but it could be other aspects that are acting on its behalf. 
okay? And we work with the energy that those parts inhabit and generate by accessing and contextualizing it in the present moment, in your current energetic body. So you can acknowledge it, yes, but also so you can let it move through you viscerally and energetically. And that's when we start learning how to ride the, the waves. That's how we learn how to start being flexible and and um, easeful with the contrasts of life, which are never ending. You're never going to figure it out and you're never going to get it done. You're never going to be this perfect vision of the most secure person that you have in your head. So what can you do? You can learn to ride the waves. You can learn to relax into yourself. You can learn to unfold into the deepest and brightest luminescence that is you. And to understand that every fly in your ointment is a point of contrast that is allowing you to expand to the farthest reaches of your own circumference. Okay. We had another question. Um, my personal development seems to stop when it gets to when it butts up against his door. He's not willing to open up and practice different techniques with me. At what point does it end with me and start with him? At what point do I decide whether or not it's time to walk away, that I can continue to become more accepting of my journey? So it's interesting because as this question unfolds, it's like it's going in deeper, right? The 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 top of the question is focusing on him and what he's doing and how what I'm doing is not making him change and what I'm doing is not earning his buy-in and what I'm doing isn't, so it's a very much an external orientation. I'm doing all this work and yet I'm not getting validated, I'm not getting approval, I'm not getting buy-in, I'm not getting cooperation from the outside world. How can I make them do it? And if they are not doing it the way that all the books and videos and YouTube videos tell me it should be happening, then what am I doing wrong, right? So we're still looking to the external world to validate something for us. We're still looking to the external world to tell us that we're getting the A grade. We're still looking to the external world to tell us when we need to stay or when it's time to go. And then the question gets deeper. At what point does it end with me and start with him? All right, so now we're starting to access more of that inner voice. At what point do I decide whether or not it's time to walk away so that I can continue to become more accepting of my journey? So by the time we get to this part of the question, I immediately have an image of the adult version of, of this person and the, the, the childlike version of this person. And the adult version says, well, this person in the outside world says that we're too needy, so you need to suppress it. And then by the time we get to the end of the question, we have the inner child saying, at what point do you listen to me instead of him? At what point do you acknowledge that I am the divine source and spark of your existence? I am who you are and I need no justification to be who I am and what I want and what I need. The stone does not justify its stillness. The wave does not justify its curve, right? Why do I have to justify this? Why do I have to make myself small? And so by the end of the question, we have the inner child poking out saying, when are you going to finally man up and honor me? So this is the dialogue that's going on inside of you. And so what happens is the energy that you have tied up in that dialogue gets projected out through, I'm a law of attraction person, through universal law. And now you attract into, now, now your inner world is mirrored in your outer world. And you attract a man who steps in and assumes the role of the adult character. And now you oscillate back and forth between being your own inner child, now acting out this dialogue with him in the external world, and becoming the adult. He says, no, you're too needy. You say, you're right, I'm too needy. We're too needy, right? It's this, this train that starts happening, right? So how, so at what point do I decide whether or not, what point? At what point? <laughs> when is enough enough, really? So, so this is where, this is a really good question because I'm not saying that you need to throw everybody out just because you butt up some conflict or contrast between you because that in essence is invalidating everyone's reality, right? So there is a process, a kind of diagnostic process that can occur and it's like, okay, there's a certain kind of self-evaluation you can do and then bring into the inter, into the, um, into the relational space, and then you have a lot of really good information. 
So, so oftentimes when we are a fish swimming in water, we don't realize that we are articulating ourselves from a place of criticism or judgment. And that is always a defensive response. When you have someone who is very critical, criticism is usually an expression of grasping for control. And when you are grasping for control, it is because you are scared. And when you are scared, it is because you feel, you feel disconnected. You feel like you don't have short footing. You feel uncertain of the people around you and of yourself. You distrust your own capacities. And at the root of that is a desire for connection, for love, for feeling filled up. And when you do feel that way, you don't grasp for control because you're not worried about it. You're just not worried about it. It'll little unfold. It'll unfold in due time. And whatever unfolds will be really good information for me. And that's gonna allow me to know how compatible we are or not. Doesn't mean I have to hate this person, doesn't make them a villain if they can't meet my needs, but through the experiences of butting up against each other, we experience conflicts and contrast, we gain more awareness and insight into the dark corners of ourselves, and then we become more aware of what we want and what we don't want. And, and you give it a little bit of time, you practice your communication, you try to be more emotionally honest, and if you've been doing that well enough and you know that you have been in process with this and you look out into your partnership and you see that your partner, while they may have access to something, has not been engaging with it and as a result is not motivated to show up to the relationship with the same level of curiosity and investment that you have, that's a journey they have to take on their own. You cannot change someone else. You cannot change someone else. Not unless they are motivated to show up into the space in the same way that you are. And that is why relationships, they're really not about a commitment to the other person necessarily. They are a commitment to yourself. You have, when you agree to be in a relationship with someone, you know it's a healthy relationship when that person prioritizes your needs and wants and desires as much as their own not more and not less and that's very important not more and not less if they prioritize your needs less then we have an imbalance and it usually leads to toxic dysfunction if you prioritize them more same thing it leads to an imbalance and we have a toxic dysfunction but if you prioritize their needs as much as your own now we're on an even playing field and now we can determine if our values and priorities are in fact a good match or not and if they're not it doesn't make them a villain it doesn't make you lacking in worthiness or not good enough it just means that your curriculum here on this earth has come to a close. Your curriculum here on this earth is meant to diverge in other directions. That means the nature of your relationship can change. It doesn't mean you have to break up with them. Necessarily, some people find alternative ways of constructing their lives together. Or maybe you end the romantic relationship, but you establish a more platonic one, right? That when you have an understanding of the gray areas when it comes to emotional, physical, mental, boundaries, the possibilities are endless for how you love, how you receive love, how you express love, and how you connect to so many different types of people and so many different types of relationship configurations. Life becomes a buffet. You know, oftentimes when we come together, there is a kernel of love there because when these projections occur, when the inner dialogue is sent out that that frequency that vibration rings out and it entrains to someone else's vibration or frequency who has a similar vibration or frequency there's a recognition there's a recognition and that's when you have that sense of like kismet right that's that sense of this is my soulmate oh my god i i just i felt so um enlivened i tingles all over my body when i met them it's just this cr tremendous sense of excitement and i knew it was predestined maybe Maybe in the sense that you have found someone that has a similar, you know, soul tribe, soul mission, soul lesson, and it's likely because you have a similar wound that is in activation. So, so it doesn't mean that it's doomed to fail. It just means that here's a ripe opportunity to work with it. And you've got someone that has a deep understanding and familiarity with that wound. The trouble comes in when we have chosen opposite ways of coping with the same wound. But to get, come back to this question, 
when you are in a relationship and you've been trying hard because you have a real positive attitude about relationships, you convince they're worth it, you see the potential, you see the divine spark in your partner, and you've become aware of all of the muck and gunk that has been coded over yourself and your own light and your own inner child. And you're like, you know what, I really want to try this expansion thing, this self-help thing, because I have an inkling, your soul has an inkling and a desire, and it's been raised into your awareness that there's got to be something bigger, better, and beyond this. And you've been working on it and and being the loving, lighted, connected, and, and generous person that you are, you would love it if your partner could join you on that journey because there's something really special and delicious about sharing that kind of growth with someone, especially someone with whom you've had um, beautiful experiences, right? Transcendent experiences. And it is a loss. It's a grief. It's a, it's a, it's a experience worthy of your grief and a feeling of loss when that person is not able to meet you there. And so the challenge then is their disconnection from themselves. Now you are confronted with their disconnection from themselves. And sometimes if we struggle with boundaries or we have some of these limiting beliefs in operation beneath the surface, we take in their disconnection from themselves and then we feel a disconnection from them as well as a disconnection within ourselves as well. We take it in as if by osmosis. It's like this energetic thing that happens. And so we start thinking, oh, but all of my self-advocacy hasn't been working. All of the hard work I've been doing hasn't worked. They're still stuck. And that's what I call the validation trap. This is the validation trap. You're still looking to them to validate your progress. You're still looking to them to validate your growth. And you're worried if I outgrow them, now all the attachment fears emerge, right? All the attachment fears emerge. If I outgrow them, what will happen? What will happen? Will love still be there for me? And then you don't want to leave them behind because you feel like they are a part of you. And in many ways they are. They carried the same wound that you did. They carried the same wound that you did. You know, we talk about if you're familiar in with, you know, new age and new thought circles, there's this concept of cutting energetic cords with partners. When you cut a cord with someone, you are, are, these cords never go away. We are all connected, we are all one. But when you cut a cord with someone, you are setting the intention to restructure that cord. You are setting the intention to place that experience in your life on the shelf where it belongs in your library, right? And you can come back to it and open it and read it anytime you want. But for now, it may be time to close the book because you've read it a hundred times over and it's time for you to gain some new knowledge, okay? And with the new knowledge, suddenly what you read in that book, you know, weeks, months, years ago is going to make more sense, but you got to put it away for now. Okay. And those cords grow back. They grow back, but they grow back in different ways. You know, this happens a lot. I have a lot of clients who will say, I was talking about and or thinking about an ex and all of a sudden they called me. Yeah, of course, because we are all connected and they're going to sense it when you pull that string, right? There's not any real deep or profound meaning beyond it, beyond it, aside from the fact to show you that you have that kind of power, especially on the energetic level. Acknowledge that and start to harness some of that so that you can move through the world a bit more intentionally. So surrendering what you can't control, the paradox is, gives you more control over the things that you can. And sometimes realizing how fearful we were at some point can be a little bit um, enlightening. It can also be a bit discouraging, like, oh, I had no idea I was operating that way. For example, um, I decided two years ago that I was going to, I had kept a, a box, I called it my love box, and it had love letters and ticket stubs and receipts and um, photographs and all kinds of, uh, you know, um, I guess paraphernalia from my, a lifetime of love and relationships, most of which, not all of them, but most of which were very topsy-turvy. <laughs> And I also found some, like, I don't know if anybody here remembers ICQ. <laughs> I'm dating myself here. Anyone remember ICQ chat? <laughs> if you remember it, just give me a little thumbs up in the chat there. I had an ICQ chat transcript from back in the day. And my, my, my words, my language, my dialogue, the way that I was talking to this ex 
was outrageous. And from my perspective now, I was like, oh my God, I was so transparent. I was clearly trying to make him jealous. I was clearly hitting below the belt in everything that I said. And I went back and I read all of this and I was like, oh my God, I was so like messed up and crazy and unkind. And then at the same time, this was someone that I gave so much to, so much to. And there was so much resentment built up on the backside of it. And I read these things and like all the tears just started flowing. The tears just started flowing. I was beating myself up. Oh, why didn't I know better? How did I not know that I was so transparent? How did I not see myself acting this way? Why did I let myself go there? And then I realized that all of that I had to go through, all of these pendulum swings I had to go through, the extremes to start to understand and navigate that middle ground. And, and if I didn't have those experiences as viscerally as I did, I wouldn't be able to be on this call and talk about them as adequately as I do. And it's just, it's funny because I'm in a relationship now, which is very secure and stable. It's not all perfect. As we butt up against these experiences of contrast and conflict, I am seeing now and witnessing myself responding differently. I still feel the triggers. I still feel the triggers. I still feel my attachment system light up. And so I take a pause and I ask questions and I try to assume an attitude of curiosity. And every single time I've done that, and I've done it every single time thus far, it has led to a repair. It has led to a deepening of the intimacy. It has led to the circumstantial um, elements of my relationship becoming increasingly sure and secure. And my love has deepened. My love has deepened. It gets deeper over time. It does not fade. Um, it doesn't become less exciting. It doesn't become less arousing. It's this like, oh, it's just like, mm, think about my man. It's, ugh, slide out of my seat. So it's just like this amazing thing and it's so secure and it feels so good. You know, on occasion he has said to me, do you like psychoanalyze me? <laughs> like, for all the things that you talk about, are you like, are you psychoanalyzing me? You are, aren't you? And I tell him, no, I try, I let all of that go. I make a conscious choice, aside from applying it to myself and the way I'm showing up in the relationship, I let it go. And I was explaining this to him and I said, it's sort of like, you know, when you started cooking, you probably were, you know, you followed that recipe to the letter, right? You were hyper vigilant about the measurements. You wanted to make sure you had all the best ingredients, so on and so forth. But once you learn, once he became a professional cook, he's a professional cook, but once you became a professional cook, it's likely you didn't have to use that recipe 75% of the time, right? If not 80% of the time. I bet you hardly ever pull out a recipe anymore. You just know how it should go. And you arrive at that place. Eventually you arrive at that place, right? And it's a much more fluid thing. It's not so static. <laughs> Does the concept of a wounded inner child resonate with you? Can you recognize how the wounded inner child may have impacted your relationships? Do you feel like you have a bit of an idea now of how to heal the wounded inner child? To learn more about healing the wounded inner child, I invite you to check out my video on YouTube, A Guided Meditation for Healing the Wounded Inner Child. Please leave a comment below letting me know how you are absorbing this content. I also take all comments into consideration for future live streams. And if you would like to participate in one of our live stream events, I invite you to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.